esteemed delegates dignitaries ladies and gentlemen i kalam bikram ji singh chief director ncdc extends a heartiest and warm welcome to all of you today it is a very important occasion for ncdc india and nidac bangkok to hold the seminar on a very pertinent subject that is cyber risks and mitigation for cooperators this webinar has attracted overwhelming participation from 20 countries and four international organizations now i request shri sandeep kumar naik ji managing director and chairman nidac to kindly go ahead with the proceedings good morning everybody namaskar yeah. it is a great occasion today that ncdc india and nidac bangkok have come together to launch a first webinar series on cyber risks and mitigation it's a privilege for me to welcome all the participants particularly the people who are always with us in our efforts i welcome dr gulsan rai our senior advisor on cyber security matters i want to mention here the presence of our esteemed colleagues and people who are with us all the time sri satish marathe ji is member central board of reserve bank of india ambassador anil trigunath kanal bikramjit singh is the chief director of the ncdc training academy madam kristi antila from philippines his excellency dr manoj narda singh international organization called ardo from bangladesh government kaji mustaq jahir saab mr ramesh t vaidya he is the national president of indian sahakar bharati the biggest organization on the cooperative sector i also want to welcome mr subramaniam bhima he is national federation of state cooperative banks managing director his excellency ambassador mr jogesh punja from fiji he is high commissioner of fiji to india ms tamine kashani from iran very important member in nidac apart from that i also welcome the participants from different countries who are with us particularly from sri lanka our vice chairman mr yes. mohammad sahabuddin riyas and mr kb upreti from nepal he is vice chairman of nidac i also invite the managing director of nh bank korea the chairman of kenyan kusco from nairobi mr george magutu mabangi and other members like mr jyotindra bhai mehta he is national federation of urban cooperative banks its head father francis lucas chairperson of federation of cooperatives in philippines ms kawat from myanmar asian institute of technology association and last but not the least the un food and agriculture organization unfao mr tomio sichiri purpose of this cyber security risks a mitigation webinar is to make our cooperatives across the countries stronger we are able to take corrective steps it is a matter of great privilege that honorable minister cooperation from very important state of india tamil nadu state he has also agreed to address the webinar through a video let us now move to the next proceedings we hope that nidac bangkok and ncdc india and other cooperative fraternity what we have joined together will bring in great value to our cooperative fraternity in times to come and also through this particular webinar on a very important subject cyber risks the next we will be showing the video address from our vice chairman nidac mr mohammad sahabuddin riyas greetings this is mohammad riyas serving as the chairman of cooperative youth society in sri lanka and the vice president of nidac just a, just a small guidance on the safety measures how we in individual can respond to the cyber attacks while working from home maintaining high secure password updating system and software for the latest versions 
being aware of phishing emails and malicious domains. Be of COVID-19 scam. Stay home. Stay safe. The next address will be by Sri K B Uprati, a vice chairman Nedak. He is also chairman of Nepal Cooperative Bank Limited in Kathmandu. Namaste. A respected chairperson and director from NEDAC and NCDC, Dr. Wilson Rai, and all participants in webinar. I would like to thank NEDAC and NCDC team for planning this webinar on cyber risks and mitigation. Uh, I welcome you all on behalf of NEDA. I am glad to see all of us together through the, this webinar. Due to the um, pandemic, organizations have started a new practice of social distancing and remote uh, working. Government is the considering uh, why ways to ensure stable economy and the health of people. However, while the world is focused on health and economy, cyber uh, crimin criminals around the world are talk, uh, taking benefit of the situation. Not only business, but uh, individuals are also being the target. Hence, and this webinar uh, has been organized to impart knowledge and awareness on this matter. Hope uh, we all will have a fruitful session. Thank you. I will request the audio message from Kenya, our uh, important member of NEDAC from Kenya. Cusco. Presentation on cybersecurity challenges faced by circles in Kenya. Circles in Kenya lack adequate cybersecurity risk management strategies. Most of the circles also have tight budgetary constraints and is not able to budget enough for cybersecurity. They also face insider threats caused by employees, ex-employees, and business associates where they leave their data exposed. There's also lack of adequate cybersecurity training among the circle members, the board members, and also the staff, leading to a lot of lack of knowledge and exposure. Most circle databases are insecure and exposed. This loophole occurs mostly where circles are hosted on cloud and on that party, leading to leaks and theft of data. Circles also lack adequate disaster recovery and business continuity strategy, where in case anything happens to a circle, then a circle is not able to bounce back within the shortest time possible. There's also improper monitoring of transactions owing to non-compliance to KYC and manipulation of the market checker concepts among the circles. Circles also lack remote controls, especially in periods like now where we have the COVID-19. Thank you. Now I'll request uh, uh, Sri Ramesh T. Baidya, he is national president of Sakar Bharti, a very large organization with grassroots uh, cooperatives working in India. Prominent dignitaries from all over the world and from India. Protect and secure your data. Prepare today for tomorrow using artificial intelligence and intelligent architization. Protect your clients, employees, and business. Strategy, good practices, ethical decisions. I am very much thankful to the NCDC and the associate uh, organization. We have organized this uh, cyber risk and uh, mitigation for cooperation. Thank you. I request uh, Mr. Vima Subramaniam, Managing Director of the National Federation of State Cooperative Banks to speak. Okay. Uh, let me at the outset uh, pay my regards to uh, Dr. Gulshan Rai, Dr. Satish Marathiji and uh, my regards to Sandeep Nayakji. Let me recall the efforts made by the NCDC and uh, the NASCOP exactly about a year back in establishing a cyber uh, security advisory forum. Subsequently, cyber security forum under the guidance of the NCDC and under the guidance of Dr. Gulshan Rai have moved forward. Now today's webinar, webinar I expect that the webinar will address two or three quick important issues with regard to the cyber risks and mitigation. One will be what type of 
cyber security framework that can be developed for the rural cooperative banks and what could be the graded approach for time bound implementation another thing is who can be made an accountable for non compliance of the cyber security measures i am sure the today's webinar will be able to address this very effectively dr gulshan rai and other experts thank you very much okay i'll uh, now move on over to uh, his excellency dr manoj nardar singh secretary general of international organization ardo to address thank you very much chairman of uh, nedac excellencies dignitaries ministers chairpersons of important uh, cooperative institutions representatives from different countries it's a pleasure for me to greet you on behalf of audio audio is an intergovernmental rural centric platform with 31 governments from asia and africa where we know cooperatives are called upon to play a greater role especially in the post covid era i would like to thank all the organizers for this laudable initiative and timely subject for today's webinar indeed all our policy makers and practitioners and cooperatives should strengthen partnership to reengineer and portray cooperatives as a solution par excellence to answer to today's clarion call for review of production consumption models as well as distribution patterns for goods services and wealth this is where cyber security plays an important role cooperatives have to be very high on the agenda with an increased visibility thus identification of all types of risk including cyber risk and ways to mitigate them are of paramount importance how do we support any initiatives targeting cooperative developments i wish all the participants of this webinar fruitful discussions and i'll suggest whatever solution we find in this webinar we can share it to all other member countries and all countries in asia and africa especially thank you thank you thank you your excellency i'll now uh, welcome his excellency sri yogesh punja high commissioner of fiji to india the great friend of nedac and the cooperative movement uh, namaste everybody uh, uh, anbola from fiji uh, this gentleman uh, uh, post covid Uh, there will be a major economic and social uh, disruption, uh, and and uh, with the the deglobalization, I think our our biggest single uh, challenge at the moment is coming up with a SOP uh, to protect our uh, uh, cyber area of of data. And I think the uh, only way forward for us is for us to all share our current knowledge of our SOPs so that we can come up with a a, a strategy for the entire. Uh, I thank you all for having having me on. Thank you. Uh, His Excellency, Mr. Tomio Sisi, uh, representative of UN Food and Agricultural Organization. Welcome, Mr. Sisi. Uh, namaste, uh, Excellency, and then also uh, respected colleague. Uh, thank you for uh, NEDAC and CDC. Uh, thank you for Chairman. Uh, organize this is a right time is a cyber risk mitigation for cooperative so i think this is a right time to organize uh, this workshop because we are facing pandemic covid-19 situation so we are still is uh, india is uh, still is uh, under lockdown phase 3 so we are looking for post lockdown will be new normal so we need to new normal for new business model so i think this is a very close related to uh, food and agriculture also this is a supply chain related cooperative so i am expecting to this uh, webinar uh, everybody speak and then also good uh, like uh, uh, exchange idea so looking forward to more uh, uh, discussion so again thank you all be safe and be well namaste thank you very much now i'll request respected uh, sri satish marathe ji director of the central board of reserve bank of india and the member of the ncdc board sri satish marathe ji thank you mr nayak thank you for and congratulations for organizing this first international webinar on this important topic even as we go through the lockdown 
I have known instances where hackers have been consistently trying to defraud institutions, including cooperative institutions. I am really happy that more than 200 delegates from more than 20 countries are participating in this webinar and it will increase our cyber security 24 by 7. Congratulations once again to NEDAC and NCDC. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sri Marataji. Now I'll uh, announce the uh, video message uh, which uh, Sri Selur K. Raju, Honorable Cooperation Minister, Government of Tamil Nadu, is a great uh, admirer and supporter and promoter of the cooperative movement in India, particularly in the state of Tamil Nadu, to address the video message. Manaka, I am very proud to participate in this webinar. I appreciate Mr. Sandeep Marnai, Chairman Nadak and Managing Director of NCTC, for his novel initiative during this pandemic. This program will be will benefit financial, sociological and psychological advantage of all the cooperative institutions across the world and is the need of our in our state, Tamil Nadu State Tabax Cooperative Bank has implemented the information security policy business continuity plan and network firewall production. We have engaged information security auditors and we are conducting our security audit regularly. Speech of Dr. Kulsan Rai will enlighten the cooperatives in the area of cyber risk and its medication. With the blessing of our Honorable Amma, and the honor of Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, Sri Edapadi K. Palanichami. I convey my best wishes for success of the webinar. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Mr. Raju, Honorable Minister. Now I'll request uh, Kadal Bikramjit Singh, the host and also the Chief Director of the National Academy on Cooperatives of NCDC, to formally introduce uh, Dr. Gulsan Rai. Uh, thank you very much, sir for setting up the right tone and platform for this seminar to commence. We are indeed delighted and honored to have amongst us a very distinguished personality, Dr. Gulshan Rai, Senior Advisor NCDC, and former Cyber Security Chief in Indian Prime Minister's Office. Dr. Rai has over 30 years of experience in information technology, including e-governance, cyber security, and cyber laws. He led a team to set up national watch and alert system in India in official forums, bilateral discussions, and negotiations in the area of cybersecurity and internet governance. Now, I would request Dr. Gulshan Rai to kindly deliver the keynote address on cyber risks and mitigations for cooperators. Thank you, Mr. Singh, my friend, esteemed friend, Mr. Sandeep Naik, Excellency Ambassador Arun Tegunal, Mr. Satish Marathe, and my distinguished friends and excellencies from different countries who are participating in this seminar. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to all of you. It's really a pleasure that I'm trying to speak and put forward certain views, particularly in this era of global transformation of the IT and with a vis a vis the pandemic COVID 19. I thank NCDC and NIDAC, Bangkok, for giving me an opportunity to be here before you. Friends, the lockdown and social distancing now has brought many things for us to learn during the last two and a half months through which the pandemic is passing through. You, if you look at any media, any newspaper world over, most of the part of the newspaper is linked with COVID-19. Even the established newspapers or the uh, journals or the magazines, they have made the information free when it comes to COVID-19. But in this process, we have seen a global transformation, particularly in the ICT sector, which has brought few things which are good and few things which are not so desirable. The first good thing which has brought, it has taken to us in flat world and a flat network. Flat network means now we are 
from different parts of the world, different parts, different location of the world. We are all sitting together, watching each other, talking together and exchanging views and saying, frankly, without any inconvenience of traveling. That's a flat system, flat society, flat world has come up there. But it has brought equalities and inequalities also. Equalities, I said the flat that we are all face to face and talking together, exchanging views and maybe we ask issues. When we go back, we'll be a little more wise because of the interaction with each other. But inequalities in the sense that I feel very jealous all of you that I'm sitting at home. I'm not occupying a chair similar like to you. All of you are occupying a very good chair, but I'm sitting at home occupying a poor chair. So if we have, if meet face to face, we do sit down on the similar chair, similar infrastructure, but this is inequalities which has come up. Friend, these two and a half months, the speed at which the global transformation has happened is really a mind boggling kind of things there. See, I have been struggling with our judicial system for the last almost a decade. I wrote the Information Technology Act and then that time we brought that the any computer document, any computer record is a legal document. We have been trying with the Supreme Court to make a video conferencing, hearing from the video conferencing a legal kind of a proceedings or legal instrument. We couldn't succeed. But suddenly, the Supreme Court bench, Sumoto issued the order, making it as illegal. Conducting the proceedings of the Supreme Court, High Court, and all other courts through the video, that way we are talking together. You find the Supreme Court of the US also is conducting the proceedings through the video. That is a major transformation which has happened. The IT sector, the IT unit, which were reluctant to make the people work from home, now in India, they say that till next two years, we will be more than 60% of their staff will be operating and accessing working from home. That's the IT industry in India has also taken a view. And I'm sure different similar views will be taken, would have been taken by, it, uh, by the different industries worldwide. That's a separate issue that the Tesla chief is threatening to move out from the California because he says, you are not permitting my employee because that is a manufacturing. That's a separate issue there. But this pandemic has brought one sector in a great advantage, that is the information communication technology sector. There is no economic kind of a stress or distress in the telecom sector. There is no economic distress in the IT sector complete IC sector, there is no distress there. That's what it has brought a lot of things from us. Other thing has happened that the work from home culture has come up over there. Now the lockdown is in world over is started relaxing, the norms are being relaxed. But I find from the reports, media reports that many of the places people are still reluctant to go for the office and they prefer the advantage of work from home. At the same time, there are some sectors where the people are also where the owners of the units are a little bit scared, a little bit worried, and they are not welcoming the work from home in the sense that they are able to see employees working for how many people. Is he working exclusively for them or is he working for many other items? Who, who home all is sharing the data. But the fact of the life, in spite of all pros and cons and negative and merits and demerits there, the work from home culture will is going to stay, which is a result of the pandemic. That's one aspect, the cultural aspect there. But if you see the technological aspect there, it has started a kind of a, a bit of a war between the companies, tech companies. All of a sudden you find that a lot of people start talking about the insecure operations of the Zoom. Lot of traffic has increased on the telecom network. The capacity, the network have been full to the capacity. And you see the major changes there. Some of the companies who has introduced the apps, video apps, one to one, one to two people, they are expanding their portfolio to one to many. Look at the WhatsApp. They say we'll have the uh, we will extend our app one to many. FaceTime, which is one to one which were considered to be one of the most secure, they say one to many. So a lot of changes have happened on the technology front also. 
that uh, this this work from home culture so if the one factor is that the every one in the tech sector tech giant now is working gearing up towards offering a better service a expanded service to the people from work from home on the video video services one to many many to many that kind of everyone is trying to do the google has merged is some of its division google duo google meet they have worked and brought into one they brought another senior vice president to head the division to bring a kind of a merger of the different kind of app they are doing so these are the changes these are the different kind of a thing we are observing now because of the work from home culture which has result of the pandemic work from home has been universally accepted there and i said barring few exceptions there it has been universally accepted and i repeat for i i say for the sake of repetition it's going to be it's going to be there for us because we have seen a different way of interacting talking finishing our work at the most convenient time and the most ease now let us see what it impacts us what is the thing that we need to look at it to be careful or to prepare ourselves what are the technologies and what do we require to work from home and all of you are interacting there what are the equipment devices which you are having we require a laptop at each individual end or a mobile phone which a good screen video capability and laptop must have a good graphic capability laptop must have a good speaker or the camera we require a phone we require a router or dsl modem for the internet connection there which connects us to the internet service provider more than that we require a good wifi connection and we require the wide area network which is called the isp network which connects my laptop my router at home and wifi connectivity to on a wide area network which ultimately brings me to all of you and it brings you all of you to me in between there are systems there because if when i interact with you it has to pass through a service provider network in this particular day in in the particular instance there is a computer servers of the zoom but if we are working from home it has to pass through the computing systems of a organization a server computer servers computer firewall system or the application program it has to pass through that kind of a infrastructure now similar setup will be required i said it's this setup in my side similar setup will be required from your side for connecting together or interacting together what do we need to work from home we need to access files from the systems we need to access the records of the system file system and we need to access our email that's what we require to do that. we can work from home so we need a robust computing system in every organization a file system the records other records there every file many of us in india are working still working on a manual file i'm sure this would be the situation in many south asian countries also there now among these thing email is one which has been made access anywhere any time almost everywhere today you can download the email you can look at email while you are traveling in a bus or traveling in a metro or traveling in a car or walking anywhere you can access the email on your mobile system but what about the applications there did we prepare ourselves for the application was our application created or the configured to access from this zoom it we never we never did that we access the emails from home and whatever the records were available from the from uh, on the emails attachment or the background backup information and the email or the information one servers of the a system there that's what there so the up today we have a issue with the application there but we need to access the application when we are working from home we need to access those application and different application 
whether it's a finance application or is a, a supply chain information system or a personal system or any other system we need to access. Now, whole entire this system, whatever I described, resources required for me to connect to you, resources be required to connect to the central system and access the application. And as I said, entire infrastructure was not set up, was not prepared from the point of view of work from home. And I can say largely for my the, the countries or the of which are participating in this today's seminar. And I can say with a with a good amount of confidence also, even the advanced countries in US and West and Japan, there are also the entire system was not designed to work from home culture there. Many of those applications were created to be accessed within the system because we created the entire security system. We created the authorization, the authentication as if we are working within the compound, within the premises, not from the system. And nothing was done other than the email. And most of the time, email in a smaller organization, maybe you are our cooperative institutions there, email is not hosted within their system. Otherwise, that email system also will have been as access within the system. They're all hosted outside their offices, premises. They use the subcontract services to host the email services. And that is why those email services are accessed from any time, anywhere. But once one this, this kind of a lack of information, lack of readiness for the infrastructure, lack of readiness or preparation to access the work from work from home has also created a lot of problems for us. And I get report from the CERT. I see a lot of news in the media, a lot of advisories being issued on the platform that the cyber attacks during this pandemic has increased many fold. Today morning, I was reading a report in the New York Times, which said a very, very disturbing kind of a news it gave it to me. And it talked about the, a country I won't name, a very robust country with respect to the security, very conscious about the security. Their systems were attacked by another country, the one of the Far East country. Their diplomat sent a mail to a UN organization there, and it found that the mail has an attachment which has a sophisticated a tool, malicious tool built in, and the mail was sent to whom? The, the copy of the mail, the mail copy of the mail was sent to the prime minister of that country. The whole attempt was to compromise the entire system. Now this work from home, creates that kind of an issue there. If I, if we, if Zoom wants to play mischief today, that's what it was projected. Or any service provider wants to play mischief today, or any hacker wants to keep an easy target, they have to penetrate one of the weak system in our entire flat system, what we are talking right now, and the entire and the system for the all of us, all participants, will get compromised. That's a big danger. That's what we are we are dealing with. It has an advantage, which we said it. It has a major disadvantage. But can we forego the advantage at the cost of disadvantage? Every system has advantage. Every system has disadvantage. Merits and demerits are associated together. The wisdom requires that we must look at the advantage and we try to the, we try to bridge the gaps which create a disadvantage. The fruit should not be forgotten, fruit should not be left just because there are disadvantages. Then we have worked, and that's why we have come up to this position so far worldwide. Now let me see our mobile phones when we access the system on a mobile phone. So many apps in the mobile phone. And every mobile phone, when you download the app, app asks the permission that I will take away your directory, media files, or photos, and everything they want to take.
they are sitting on your system if tomorrow after that you want to delete the app it will not let you delete the app till the time you reformat the mobile system so your mobile system most of the time is bit compromised yes today the android system or the apple kind of a system and every android android has different version google produce a android base android but the every every company samsung or the google they apply their own modules top of this to uh, to secure their android system they have a different implementation of the android system your apple phone is also seen and monitored continuously by the apple system there so security on the mobile phone has increased but still there is a issue as i said we download the app and we don't know what is the what is the genuineness of the app what is the source genuine source from where we are downloading whether it is a malicious source it's a bad source we don't know and phones to some extent gets compromised that is one aspect which you can see which is under your control and you are seeing every day but look at the modem which it connects the wi-fi modem which he connects to do there most of the modems comes largely come from a single country i won't name you understand but more than that the modems come for the de facto default passwords there the service provider which installs the modem or we buy the modem from different sources hardly we they hardly we know what is the default password and hardly we change the default password to a customized password so over a period of time lot of awareness has come up and many of us and many of you are putting up the password creating the password but then are we creating a strong password are we creating a robust password or are we changing the passwords frequently that's it the second aspect in the modem comes up are we configuring the modem because as computer system there are many software rules we call the protocols or we call the ports p o r t s in a technical language there there are many ports many protocol at a time functioning working on the modem and those protocol and software rules are required because modem has to serve many applications and variety of people variety of users running different different applications i am using the zoom or other system somebody making the financial system and like this different applications are running here one of the software rule is tel telnet which is used when i do work from home that i connect to my computing system in my office on a work from home environment using one of the port called software rules or a telnet now this telnet itself is a source of a problem of a security breach most of the time we don't secure we don't know what telnet is there the service provider doesn't tell us the security staff doesn't tell us look 1 2 3 you need to do that now you go back to the this is at my end you go back to the office environment where there is a office computing systems are there the office system when you access the so far the authorization authentication system was as i said was meant to authenticate users within the premises it used to do from the ip address which is a unique number allocated to any network users it used to do the password kind of a things there and there never used to be any authentication authorization with in the applications there which we different application we access those authorization authentication were weak the firewall system was different but they they were never geared up for work from home they are never geared up for work from home kind of environments there so these kind of a breaches has been a cause of a concern it is a is a concerns when we talk about work from home and that brings a subject of cyber risk to all of us and i say said if your systems are weak you can see what havoc will be will, will get created the way we are connected in different parts of the world 
today we are connected we are talking together we are on a laptop we are on a mobile phone we, our computing system is passing through so that's kind of it. now see the limitations of my work from home or any video system there we need a better quality for the video we need a better quality for the audio and we need a security also the security can be there either by compression or by encryption but the technology puts a limit we cannot compress any kind of a signal beyond a certain limit i can do maximum 1 is to 3 now the technology is improving we are able to go slightly more than 3 now we if we put a strong encryption the size of the my telecommunication traffic goes up and there it becomes a problem in the traffic in the in the internet traffic become slow response become slow latency becomes high access becomes a problem so there is a limitation in that also encryption and compression also but at the same time we understand we need a quality of video and quality of software now this kind of a thing as i said has given advantage to the hackers worldwide and if you look at the media if you look at the website or look at the the uh, the uh, internet there the attacks have increased many fold many fold and i said i were giving two examples there which was very deadly example of the at last two days example there in india the cert has said the attacks has gone up may almost a factor of 10 ncipc which is the national critical information protection center has also has warned that the attacks have increased people have tried to hijack the video session and they're trying to do a different business model by putting advertisement and many hackers there are state actors there are non state actors also there they have taken the advantage you have heard the taking advantage of the economic distress one of the country world over event and bought over some of the company they invested they enhanced their stake in the companies there similarly hackers also have done the same thing using the such a weakness in the infrastructure and the high use of the infrastructure they are have installed so many their clients their their their, their, their software systems in in the different computing system different system so that they can continuously access those system as steal the information information is today monetized there is no one whether you call a professional company i won't name the company the entire social media system function on a monetization of the data and that's why one of the uh, dignitaries who was making a brief comment he used the financial system i think mr mr uh, i mean mr uh, uh, someone from bombay he was making the statement there financial system there everyone wants to monetize because it has a financial value log of data is taken away and put on the dark net underground networks there which you can access only through the a special software special kind of a tools there is put there data is sold by keeping myself i may not be the hacker may not be interested to disturb your system like the way we are talking about it but he is more interested in picking up the the passwords he is picking up this picking up other information and host it so that other can use the other can use the platform for the uh, for for the different purposes there what we need to do it is the system is going to going to be there we need to take steps now steps has to be the nature of a technology steps need to be have the or the nature of process and more than that we need to change our cultural habits also we need to change our habits there we need to whatever may happen we we may work we may go to the office and work together but there will be a greater amount of a work which will come from work from home will be there so all of us has to accept the concept of work from home and inculcate the habits we need to look at what technology we need it what we need to 
change our cultural habit, what we need to install in terms of processes in the office there. We must consider the environment in which we are working there. And every institution has its own different environment. Every institution has its own way of culture, working IT culture there. We need to look at it. The home means working from a safe and a secure place. That's what we, when we talk about home, we feel that our systems are secure when we are working. But are we secure? We are talking from a secure location when we are working from home. No one is looking at our data. No one is looking at a screen. But is it so? It's not so. At times, my family members, when I'm working, they come here and they see certain data because he's my family member, trusted fellow, see the data there and I don't mind it. But at times, the data is so interesting that casually he referred to somewhere. So now, this kind of a secure system is brings a certain luxury to the people who are working for home. Now, we need to take certain steps, corrective steps, to make our work from home secure and which is the need of the time. Those working on the shared platform, they have different responsibilities and those working from a singular system have a different responsibility. As far as possible, people who are working from a shared environment, they must lock their screens if they have to go for a moment out here, there, or something else, they must lock their screen so that nearby people, even from home, no one should be able to look at the screen. Or when they are not accessing their system, the screen should be locked. The physical possession of the device while working from home should remain with the person, with the employee, with who is working from home. Because of the inherent issues of encryption and compression, which I said, a VPN connection, virtual private network need to be established. And that's the responsibility of the organization who is permitting, who is allowing the work from home to allot a VPN to their employee which, through which they connect the device, their computing system or the mobile system to which they connect. Now the VPN is not a, some rocket science which it used to be there a couple of years. Today you can get a VPN dedicatedly made for your organization. It helps you to secure your information while they transit. Even if the hacker side to access in between, he can't. And second thing VPN does it, that it allows you a proper authentication and authorization when in your go to the system. Because VPNs are dedicated. A, now, for example, the NCDC will have a different VPN. The other organization of cooperative bodies will have a different, Need Act will have a different VPN system. So it can serve as an authorized system, authentication system. You can very well design, you can look at it, and it's all tied up. Most of the time, you can tie up with a device, laptop device, through which you can identify at, at every level, different level, you can do the authentication and authorization. The next thing, we have to be very, very careful in allowing the family members or a third party, third member to access the work devices. We should be very careful to allow our family members because the, at times the information which we are working from home could be confidential, could be a secret information or maybe more important from the commercial part of you. So as far as possible, we should be careful and we should take precaution that our family members or third party people should not have access to our devices and for the non office works there. We should be able to see that we should be able to see that we work from home on a separate kind of a system, which is a home system should be separate, non work uh, home and the work from home separate system. As far as possible, use a, your own personal phone or a laptop and we should avoid the hotspot Wi-Fi. Public Wi-Fi you should avoid. We should use a captive Wi-Fi and we must ensure that the passwords of the captive Wi-Fi router 
should be changed frequently not only change you should be it should be it should be strong password if you look at every everyone talks about a strong password is minimum eight character password which we have upper case or lower case uh, 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 the letters there and in between special character if you use one two three four five it is easy to crack tools are there you can crack the password abcd you can crack the password so the idle strong password is the eight character with a lower case upper case and special character aspect is there as far as possible i think most of us are other than the md and cdc who are using the headset headphone all of us are using the phone of the laptop because we are talking in general but if you are working from home we should be using the headset like the MD and CDC using it. Headset phone, you must be uh, 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 using it. These are the instruct. These are the some steps which are necessary at the home side by the individual, which we need to take it minimum to do. But he need to be complemented by the corporate or by the organization need to complement it. What can be done that? We need to look at our applications, which I said, most of the applications are not created from the point of view of work from home, authentication, authorization. We need to look at our applications and create those file system, modify the file system, which ensure security while accessing from different location at any point of a time. See, different location, authentication, authorized file system is a bit, bit difficult there. If you are working from home, you have one IP address which is given to you by the service provider. But if you are working from, uh, I mean, if you are working from premises there, you have one IP, assist IP address which is given to by service provider. But if you are working from home, you have a different IP addresses, dynamic IP addresses, which are given to you by the service provider. And different IP address coming from different location becomes a security problem, authentication problem, authorization problem for an application system or for the devices to recognize them. So we need to create, and as far as possible, the work from home requirement may need a static IPs there rather than a dynamic IPs. In India, when the pandemic started, all the multinational IT companies, which are the IT BPO company, India leads the IT BPO companies. They required permission from the work from home because they, somehow there were issues, regulations there. And after discussing with the Department of Telecommunications, they were given a permission within 24 hours to work from home. But then the Department of Telecommunications that time didn't realize. They say use the static IPs. And I was also with the industry pleading with the Department of Telecommunication, but that you should be flexible, you should do that. But a service provider does not have so many static IP addresses. We are functioning on a different kind of a internet system where the IP address allocation numbers are limited. We are moving to a different system called IPv6. Right now, all of us who are participating functioning on internet based on a protocol IPv4, internal protocol version 4, where the IP address is, it is not unique. Few IP addresses are there, everyone, it works like a, your EPBX in your office, you have a few lines and they are distributed to so many people there. So dynamic IP address, when you log in, the service provider gives you every time a new IP address depending upon the convenience, depending on the time, availability there. That poses a problem. After fighting with the Department of Telecommunication, now we have been able to convince them and got a static IP address. Now, static IP address helps in recognizing the, the particular user who is coming from home or coming from different, different locations to our computing system. We can implement a better security on our central computing system. So, as far as possible, we must try to give a static IP address in our work from home kind of environment where the, our file system, our email system, or our records, central computing system, central devices, they are able to recognize the, the static IP address. Together with the VPN, it makes a good layer of security. 
That's one aspect the, of the office, corporate office need to see. The second aspect we need to, the corporate sector we need to see from the corporate office that we must apply the security patches. We must apply the updates of, this, of the software which are released from time to time by, this, by the vendor or the OEM equipment manufacturers. If you don't apply the, those uh, kind of the patches, security or update versions there, the vulnerabilities comes in the system because these patches are supplied to improve performance, to improve the security system, somewhere it breach and they apply, the, they create, they come out with the patches and they're applied there. So we need to apply the patches, we need to apply the security aspect there. And then, and more is particularly needed on the router and the firewall aspect there. I just want to emphasize that don't use the personal device for the office work. And I think office will come forward, should come forward to create a scheme and help its employee to procure a professional device which need to be used only for the office work there, not for the personal work. Now, do not connect any kind of a USB drive, the pen drive onto your, on, onto your system which you use for the work from home. I have seen n number of different kind of a, the breaches which is being introduced by the USB drives. They are used, drives are used everywhere, very, very, very openly they are used, very liberally they are used, at different locations they are used. As a result, most of the pen drive which are used at different locations, they are compromised, they have a malware and they download the malware in your system and as such, your systems are compromised and you can make other systems to be compromised. So don't connect any pen drive on your professional system which you are using for work from home. Avoid connecting the personal device and the professional device which you use for work from home together because then it, then it creates a problem. The, the malicious things may transfer from one system to another system. We must see to it that the offices must set up a, a kind of a help desk. The help desk should be able to provide help, not only for the computing kind of a requirement, for, but for the security requirements also. Any problem being faced by anyone should be reported to the help desk and the help desk should help in configuring the system, maybe the employees may have to take the laptops or the parts of their official official devices to the office to get it configured to get it uh, uh, properly configured uh, to for the for the environment there so the the all kind of help whether it's a computing requirement or the security requirement help that should be there and we need to contact the security in case of any problem we need to make sure and we need to be very vigilant that we read the mails, we read the alerts sent by the, our help desk or the security staff in the organization or by the vendors who is providing the antivirus systems or the security patches to them. We need to read their mail because any malicious thing is monitored by those vendors because and they try to alert for the system there. In this pandemic, lot many malwares were floating in the name of COVID-19. Phishing, phishing websites and phishing mails were created. And then we need to be very, very careful that any mail coming from, on our, from our mail system, we need to see that, that it's an authentic mail. We don't just blindly click the mails. We try to look at very carefully, experience tell us, whether it's a phishing mail or a non-phishing mail there. And we need to be very, very careful and to click the mails. It is, becomes a very easy if you develop a knack of looking at the mail address. You can very well see that this is a mail, this is a phished mail, this is a fake mail or a morph mail, it's not a genuine. 
every genuine male will be different than the fishing male and vice versa. In the address, there will be something. Some, some parameter, if you compare the two addresses there, you can find that there will be a difference of a comma, there will be a difference of English letter there, there all will be some difference there. And I can tell you almost all the email system, all organizations, including your all organization, they have implemented a secure kind of email call to HTTPS, secure mail. Yeah. So, so we need to see, we know that the mail coming from our server is HTTPS, for example. And if I see the mail address, which is called HTTP, it should put a doubt on me. Look, my email address has been HTTPS. This is HTTP. So there is a problem because I don't get my office works on HTTPS, not work on HTTP. So if a little application of mine, you can see that the fish mails are there. And I tell you the USB fish mail and downloading the information from the internet. These are the three main reasons for compromising our system on the security breach. And we need to be very, very careful. And that's why I was insisting repeatedly that the, the system which we use for work from home, that is a professional system or the personal system should be separate. They should not intermix, they should not be connected and no, no sharing will be there. Uh, uh, because we, on a personal system, we can do many things, but we can't afford to do on the workforce systems as it will compromise many of the systems there. Friends, as I said in the beginning, we are in a global transformation. ICT is going to remain. Work from home is going to increase. Small, small precautions and small, small kind of a, uh, 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 things which we, which we learn from our security team, from other, other officers, there, other organizations, from the media report, will make our working from home very secure and you will really enjoy the working from home. See, as long as I was the national cyber coordinator, you know, I was never in the Facebook. I was never in the social media. Until today, I'm not on Gmail. I'm not on the any kind of email. I never used mobile phones uh, for the internet purposes there. I never allowed email to be downloaded on, the, on, my, uh, on my mobile phones there. I had two systems separately, one for the office work and one for the personal work. The office work I used to carry the phones there. I used to carry system there, and 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 even then, I was not carrying out special kind of a work or the secret kind of a work on that laptop which I was carrying from home to that because you never know where it will get lost there. So for any confidential thing, I was using only the system which was installed in my office in my room. And I initially it, it found I found to be a problem, but thereafter. I found it to be very, very easy because the, the, I, I established, I calculated the practice in me and the entire cultural thing in me and I found very, very safe from, from every aspect and it boosted my, uh, my confidence to working on the internet and to the public network. I, uh, this is what I wanted to say. I've taken a lot of time and I thank uh, once again the NCDC, particularly my friend Mr. Knight and the, all my friends to uh, listen to me patiently and giving me opportunity to say a little bit about that because I never wanted to make my address a, a, a more detailed, a, a more deep technical. It, has, it should be something which should be, should be able to understand. Of course, whatever I've said and as, well, as was mentioned in the, uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, distinguished delegate who addressed, that I will be writing down the guidelines which I have set and elaborate it and give it to the MDA, MD and CDC who will may like to circulate to all of you to the other organization. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Uh, Rai, thank you very much. Uh, I, I have uh, just uh, a lot of questions have come, but I'll pick up three questions uh, for a quick answer. Uh, but before going to the question and answer uh, session, uh, your talk has highlighted the current situation and the new challenges the cooperatives are going to face. The cooperatives were initially in the IT um, frontier, they were facing challenges because each IT application or IT 
cyber security related adoption requires a huge amount of investment and cooperatives a large number of cooperatives have uh, so string budgets for the it applications and this is going to add uh, new dimensions to the challenges that is being faced i have uh, one uh, uh, question uh, from uh, from the kuraki kuraki tehran iran they are an adac member for registering they had uh, posed a question what are the measurements provided for cooperative members through nedac nedac is a platform of cooperatives where iran uh, kuraki is a old, old member so they have asked this questions what are the measurements we provided for cooperatives members i am sure you have addressed this question but shortly if you can repeat the answer thank you uh, uh, mr nag i have addressed as you said i have addressed these questions in my i was most of the lecture my focus on this and um, uh, 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 you see people from who work from home they are not uh, hardcore technical people they are they are all people which are which have a day to day knowledge of the computing system or the information so as i said we need to look at the uh, some precaution steps which we need to take it both with respect to the technology process and our cultural aspect there we will be able to provide certain guidelines which we have said elaborate guidelines and which the md ncdc may like to circulate to all of you which give a clear kind of a picture the steps which we need to take it these steps are in the nature of the the precautions which need to be taken by the individual the some responsibilities of the uh, organization from where the who is who i mean organization the corporate office uh, uh, and the and and more than that choosing appropriate my partner stakeholder in the entire system thank you yeah, th thank you dr rai uh, there is a question very short question but very relevant uh, from jyotin bhai mehta he is uh, the chairperson of the national federation of uh, urban cooperative banks almost 1800 the banks of different sizes across india and the members of this federation he has a three word question is zoom safe you see i i tell you what are the charges against zoom the some data is being taken away i i mean there are this is a more a political question i would like to avoid this question but there are ways and means to secure a system there and uh, when when the md and cdc asked me the opinion about the zoom i said the look if you look at what are the system system which you have on the market zoom microsoft team facetime or the google duo or you have the webex these are the system which are there in the market there they have been established over a period of a time in terms of scalability in terms of reach also there the systems and there are two issues there one is this one is whether the zoom is safe the other important aspect is that whether the people who are connecting to zoom their system is safe because like it like a uh, like a pandemic covid 19 if i am in touch with someone who has a a covid the, the kind of a covid 19 features i don't get safe social distancing concept is that that we become safe and keep there i am also as a individual i also have to follow certain precautions certain certain rules and regulations there so these are the two aspect one the zoom infrastructure is safe other is that the people who are accessing the zoom or any other video system is it safe now i i also said that every every service provider who deals with the content they monetize the data that's what it is now these people zoom for a long time was free microsoft team was long time was free how do they survive facebook is free google is free how do they survive they monetize the data sell the data so any service provider will take the data will sell the data whether is it zoom abcd since you asked zoom so i'm taking the room i'm not taking any other name there every search video service provider will collect the data one of the service provider let me name microsoft team he said they said the not the notification they said is that as long as you are my subscriber i will keep the data the moment you are not my subscriber i will delete it now 
have you seen mr mehta the data is deleted or not deleted have i seen as a user data deleted not deleted there what's a guarantee that data is not being sold okay so this aspect it's very difficult to answer there so that's a, that a aspect which is applicable to everyone what is the issue which comes on the zoom to be safe or not to be safe is that the data is being loaded onto the underground network there where the people are picking up the passwords and they are interjecting on my on when we deal with it now when i am talking to all of you or you are talking to me someone interjects and try to hijack the session or try to do that i think they everyone is now introducing the security feature because of the large potential of the usage not only today but the future and zoom has also issued the advisories we need to implement security features on our side to do that so zoom why zoom is popular because it is a very user friendly i don't want to compare the other on this platform because that is not a that's not a professional kind of a thing is there the one of the factor which make the zoom popular is the user friendly you send the name put your name there and start functioning there every system which is user friendly will have a problem will have a problem but it's our duty that we need to take care of it like a pandemic it says you have a maintain a social distance you need to put a mask there we save ourselves by putting a mask there so we need a similarly we need to create a security system within our within our office one of the important aspect is that you create the routing system for zoom within your office you can negotiate with the zoom create your system within your office for work from home environment and every data is with you not with zoom he gives you only software you load on your system create your desktop system and do that it's possible to do that so one has to look at a different configuration different kind of arrangement there but some of aspect will remain which we need to look at it again uh thank you dr rai uh, for the uh, elaborate i'm answer. not sorry sorry mr rai i mean i'm not trying to answer for uh, uh, trying to take favor of anyone or trying to credit discredit anyone i'm not trying to do that so the question was particularly on that i try to answer in a in a, uh, a as a as a professional technical professional i have to answer it without getting into the politics uh thank you uh there is one question from the other side of the world uh, from Kuijan City, Philippines, a uh, large cooperative federation. They have uh, asked, "We have, that is, uh, FPSTC. We have e-commerce platform. How do we manage the risk from being hacked or fished? Especially potential customers uh, will input their personal details and account numbers if they are applying." Uh, this is a complicated problem. I think many things are asked in a question there. one is the it has a let me see the main basic two part one is how to secure our system other is that the uh, other is that on the user side who access your system i think i address my some of the things in my address we need to look at the proper configuration of the system we need to install authentication authorization of any user who access the e-commerce platform there and and there are i mean i think you allow all e-commerce platforms allowed to a particular app and we should recognize our app there and we should keep on monitoring our apps there that and we can through the app system we can easily authenticate authorization there so security any traffic coming from a user organized from a, any subscriber or a user or a customer need to be screened right at the entrance level of the port portal there it means it has to be screened at the the entrance of your router where the or if any malicious activities are there it need to be screened now i give a very clear example to you and people tell me google you take a google or you take a facebook or you take any other system twitter they are accessed by different people different different location different devices there how does the system doesn't get corrupted there you don't get the kind of a people who are accessing there they screen they 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 do the security check of any user accessing the their their platform there they don't want the platform to be messed up there so they install a, a appropriate security check system right at the entrance level which you also have to do apart from 
uh, installing the perimeter security or other devices to check your uh, systems there. I mean, there are different devices, web firewall and everything is there. And the most important is that the configuration of the entire setup need to be seen very, very carefully because most of the time is the misconfiguration which creates a problem. We may install all perimeter security devices, everyone install a firewall, but how my firewall is configured, how my VPN is configured, how my app is configured is what is important. If we monitor the traffic coming from an app for your e-commerce portal, we know that app will give a particular format of the traffic which is coming there. Particular signal will come, particular traffic will come. And if you find variation in the traffic, it puts alarm, it should put alarm, it should put an alert that this is something different traffic is coming because it's your app, which I am which I am using it to access your system, place my orders there. It's, it's a set pattern of traffic is coming there. If the pattern, if traffic is different, because I know my app very well, then it should put alarm. So I think one has to look application of mind. You can, you can prescribe some of the things, but some of the things need to be seen depending upon the environment and situation there and, and the kind of a customization we need to do according. Thank you, Dr. Rai. <clears throat> we also have where, uh, the Bangladesh Rural Development and Cooperative Department uh, Secretary was to join, but he is deputed a very senior officer, Mr. Kachi Mustak Jair. Uh, do you have any questions uh, as far as Bangladesh is concerned? I wanted this because uh, Bangladesh is also facing similar, they are the government department. Uh, no, I think the question which is already been asked by uh, whether Zoom itself is uh, secured, uh, I, I got the answer. It was, okay, uh, I thank, got you. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kaji. So now I'll uh, request Father Francis Lucas, uh, is the chairperson of the FSPDC in uh, in Philippines, uh, FPSTC, that is a very large federation of cooperatives. They work in many fronts. They have been partners in in uh, NEDAC, uh, all kinds of activities. I welcome Father Lucas to this uh, gathering, and I also would like to request you to have the concluding remarks and also present the vote of thanks on behalf of NEDAC and also this forum. A blessed afternoon to us all, especially uh, for for the honourable uh, gentleman and uh, of course our main speaker. And I'd, I, I'd like to start with thanking everybody. I'd like to, on behalf of the FPSDC, Federation of People for Sustainable Development Cooperatives, uh, Dr. Sundeep Kumar Mayak, Managing Director of NCDC and Chairperson of NEDAC, who facilitated our webinar. Second would be, of course, our uh, excellent speaker, Dr. Gulshan Rai, uh, Senior Advisor, NCDC, and our Chair Resource Person. Likewise, all the participants from the different parts of the world. We have now 254, some of uh, them left us already, maybe of bad signal, and uh, from uh, more than 20 countries who participated here. And also would like to thank both the two vice chairs of NEDAC and all the members of NEDAC. But last but not the least, we have to thank NCDC for organizing this webinar. But likewise, for my concluding remark, <laughs> I just noticed that um, most of us, board chair, uh, directors, officers, are not as expert as Dr. Rai. And there are many things that he's saying, which we cannot just simply grasp. I just would like to suggest that maybe there will be another round where we also have our technical people to understand this risk mitigation and crime, uh, cyber crimes. Just a suggestion. But I'd like also to, I've been in, in uh, industry and managing media industries in the past four to six years, and now, uh, some of these were said by Dr. Rai that human society today is being pushed to enter the digital world through a digital platform. What are the three reasons? First is globalization and globalism. Second is the desire 
from humans to be to have more efficient communication what are those efficiencies ubiquity speed simplicity and last is convenience and third is covid-19 <laughs> producing the new normal but any and all technology especially disruptive technology has two faces has like a two edged sword which uh, dr lulchan has also dr rai has told us it's a boon and a bane it's a blessing or a curse it will build or destroy therefore this workshop is very timely cyber risk management and mitigation is very important for us all so a blessed afternoon once more to all and uh, may we have learned at least something to work with our own cooperatives because our cooperatives is a movement of people for economic equity social justice and the love to all people good afternoon everyone thank you father uh, welcome so thank you very much thank you all the participants uh, for taking the pains to be part of this uh, webinar and uh, the many suggestions which uh, have come uh, we would uh, we would definitely consult each other and uh, carry it forward thank you namaskar